Well, the bipartisan effort is underway on Capitol Hill to restore the tuition assistance program for members of the military. The Army, the Air Force, and the Marines suspended this popular program, blaming the automatic spending cuts known as sequester. Uh, joining me now is one of the sponsors of the bill to try to figure out some way to keep this in is Republican Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. Senator, nice to have you back with us. Jenna, it's good to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity on what I think is a very important topic. Well, we thought it was an important story, too. But one of the things that we've heard about sequester is that it was sweeping and in many ways uh, irreversible. So what exactly can Congress do to change this? Well, working its way through the uh, Senate today on a bill that's already passed the House, uh, this weekend it's being negotiated, next week a vote, is what's called a continuing resolution. It funds the federal government between now uh, and the end of the fiscal year. And so this is an appropriation bill that gives us the opportunity to make some adjustments uh, in sequestration. What I think we have here is the administration was opposed to sequestration, didn't believe that we could afford uh, the $85 billion in reduced, reduced spending, or what I really should say is in reduce the increase in spending. Uh, and so it seems to me that they picked many of the most popular and important programs to highlight how terrible sequestration would be in reality so 85 think, so billion think dollars this choice, well, you think this choice to cut this financial assistance is political well it's it certainly there's less there is still more money there in fact in most instances there's more money in these accounts than there was uh, just several years ago and in many cases more money than what the president recommended in his budget uh, last year so it does suggest that there is this picking and choosing of how to uh, most affect the public so that there's more pressure on members of Congress to undo sequestration. But $85 billion, a lot of money. It's only 28 days the amount of money the federal government borrows. It's something that's manageable, but I think what we have is singling out these programs that cause great damage and, and cost to Americans so that we respond. This bill gives us the opportunity to say, don't cut this, but there are other things here that, so, that we don't need to spend money on. So Make priority find decisions. Where do you find the money to, so this is about a half billion dollars, $500 million that pays for this program. Where does the money come from? If, it, if they're not choosing to cut this, what do they cut in order to have the money for this program? Or are cuts not needed? I'm, I'm curious about where specifically you find the money to backfill for no, this program. For, for example, Jenna, I also have another amendment that uh, deals with White House tours. And what we discovered was we, we transfer money from the Department of Homeland Security, they just two weeks ago purchased $50 million of TSA new uniforms. And how did that become a higher priority than some of these other things? In, in that case, uh, closing the opportunity for Americans to see the White House. Uh, I think what we're asking here is to use your discretion, uh, use some common sense, and make decisions that benefit the American people. Almost any business person if they were asked to cut a small percentage in the increase in their spending, could say, well, we could do it without this, but this is more important. And so I think this is the opportunity to, to clearly send the, uh, the requirement, in fact, the message, but it's more than that, the requirement sure. that this is a priority. So there are other things that shouldn't be. Let me ask you about the White House tours. We just got news that the, um, the Easter egg roll is on for Congress and congressional families at the White House. It's a tradition, it's done every year. So the Easter egg roll is on for Congress, but the average American family can't go and visit the White House. What do you think of that choice to keep the Easter egg roll on for congressional members, but regular families well, can't go visit it, the White House? Do you think that's fair? No, absolutely not. Who would think that way? Uh, if there's anything that, uh, that would reduce the perk or benefit of a, for a member of Congress, that's a low priority. Get rid of it and spend the money on behalf of all of Americans. I had constituents in this office. In fact, we've canceled, I think it's 16 tours. We have to call Kansans and say, I'm sorry, the tour that you have planned to take at the White House for the last three months is no longer available. This week we had constituents in the office who had young boys with them, their kids, uh, and for three months they've been planning to come to Washington, D.C. to show their kids the White House, and you have to say, I'm sorry, we can't let you in. The, the White House won't let you in. These are, get rid of the Easter egg roll if, that's, if, if you can spend the money on letting Americans in. I see the White House says they're now going to try to find a way to get young people in, but 
kids, I, I'm all for that, but what about the 90-year-old World War II veteran who happens to be in Washington, D.C., has never seen the White House, the, 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 well, the, the people's home. You're breaking some hearts, uh, I think, just, Senator. Again, I bet there's some of your colleagues that had some grandkids that wanted to, and maybe some children that wanted to go to the Easter egg roll this year, but we'll see if they continue to have it, because right now it's on, and, and we just thought it was worth a question about whether or not it makes I think sense. it's a great question, and it makes <laughs> no sense to me. That's silliness. Senator, it's nice to have you back on the program. Thank you for the time. Jenna, thank you. I say restore the White House tours.